Hey creepy people, this is P&W Haunts and Homicides. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Cassie. Together we explore stories of the paranormal and true crime throughout the Pacific Northwest. We're just two normal-ish friends who wanted more creepy local stories. Our episodes start with a tarot reading to help us gain some insight on each topic as we share the facts of the case and our interpretations. Come join us. We've got plenty of wine, laughs, and stories to share. You can find our episodes featuring true stories from infamous as well as lesser known true crime cases like the murders in Tunnel 13 and Forest Park. As well as our spooky stories from Pike Place in the Oregon Vortex on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, and many more. For all of you that are listening, if you have any true crime or paranormal stories that you want us to share, maybe with the whole Pacific Northwest, they don't have to be from the Pacific Northwest if you would like to share, email us at pnwhauntsandhomicides at gmail.com. It's all spelled out, no special characters. Last but certainly not least, head over to Patreon to support the show and we can provide even more creepy content. Have Have a a creepy creepy ass ass day. day! The song used in the following promo is called Audio Realm by Pariah. Hey, this is Courtney from a true crime and paranormal podcast called The Nefarious Nightmare. I'm here to tell you about KYLRclothing.com. KYLR is another ally for victims and against the heinous acts caused by sex offenders, rapists, and pedophiles. Their mission states that the realization of how common sexual assault is, and in most cases, the perpetrator gets a slap on the hand, leaving the victim scarred for life and without justice. That is the drive in which this company was created. Their goal is not only to raise awareness on the disgust disgusting commonality of sexual assault, but also to let the victims know that they are not alone and that we are in their corner. They say they look forward to working with and donating a portion of their yearly profits to local battered women's shelters and other charities. Go check out KYLRclothing.com. That is KYLRclothing.com. And let's work together to make rapists afraid again. Content warning. This episode includes foul language and discussion of violence. Trigger warning. This episode includes discussions that explore sexual violence, which includes molestation and rape, and may be triggering. Listener discretion is advised. Hey guys, so um, real quick, I'm just going to kind of give everybody a heads up that we've been trying to make our intros a little bit shorter. This one is actually going to be a little bit longer because um, we have a couple of little things to address here. Um, First of all, we've gotten some really badass reviews, and I think that um, I want to read them. Amanda, are you okay with me reading them? Yes, of course. <laughs> she had to think about that one for a minute. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I think Amanda's really here tonight. <laughs> Listen, I am, I'm not going to blame you at all for that, because I'm off my meds right now, and I'm not really that here either, so it's all good. So, oh, it's be a crazy night. Um, so, I'm going to start with... One from another podcast called PN, PN, oh my god, I almost said penis. <laughs> no. No. This is going to be the best podcast ever. <laughs> yeah, we are the best. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's called the PNW Haunts and Homicides, and um, they were kind enough to leave us this review. And speaking of penis, they titled their review, Amaze Balls. I loved it. Yeah, I'm, I saw uh, Amaze Balls, and I thought you were like going to tell me we got sponsored by Amaze Balls. Well, you know, we almost got sponsored by something called uh, Shave Your Shit. I think that's what, no, what was it called? It was like no, it was um, it was a no, man was balls, that? something weird. You remember? It was, yeah, it was like a ball shaver. Yeah, and I was like, I got really excited about it. I was like, um, yeah, I want to talk about that. I kind of was excited about that too, but then I realized after I did like some investigating that a lot of people got that message and it's kind of spam. Yeah, this game is spam. Yeah, they want they want you to pay to be sponsored and I'm like, mm, that's not how this works. <laughs> okay, on to the review. Amaze balls, five stars. Thank you. Okay, this one's kind of long and I love it. Amanda and Courtney are simply put amaze balls, y'all. I've so enjoyed getting to know my new bestie court recently. You guys have such a wonderful chemistry and sense of humor. It's rare for me as a podcaster to find another host that I connect with so quickly, and I feel like I've known you for years. Court, 
I too really wish Apple Podcast Reviews would let us showcase our foul mouths as we share our love for one another, but we'll save that for the DMs, darling. Just have to say, if you need a recommendation for a podcast, this is it. But freaking podcaster extraordinaire Courtney can also point you to at least three or four more that she would vouch for passionately. And I would. If you've listened to our podcast long enough, you've noticed that I will promote the shit out of you if I like you. If I don't, there's some problems. Anyway, back to this review. Um, she's a truly rare person, kind, hilarious human, and her co-host ain't bad either. Sorry, Amanda, just kidding, you're well loved. <laughs> Some I'm here too. <laughs> Just kidding, you're well loved, and then some in your own right, of course, m'lady. Now, thank you. Everyone, throw her some love. You both make people feel like welcome friends in your show and in every interaction. I dare anyone to email them a spooky story or an adoring love note and disagree with me. The energy of these ladies and their show is truly infectious. I love that. We are infectious. I'm gonna. Affect everybody's ear holes, but in the good pre-COVID way. I promise. P and W haunts and homicides. Thank you guys so much for that. That was that brought tears to my eyes when I read That's it. So nice. Thank you yeah. guys. Yeah, we love you guys. Thank you for being our pod besties. Um, another one is from Shauna M B, and this one is titled "A Dynamic Duo I Want to Hang With." Five stars. Ooh. Courtney and Amanda are hilarious, but are serious when it comes to the cases they cover. They're empathetic. They share victim stories in a way that is respectful, while sharing the truth of the monsters that walk among us without glorifying them. I highly recommend this podcast. Shauna or Shawnee? She is Shawnee. She also has a podcast called Empath for the Unsolved. She also has another one called Ghoul Rambles. I will get more into Shauna after I read these answered questions from Jason Vukovic, which I promised that I would do. So let me find them (laughs) because I am disorganized as fuck today. Okay. (laughs) The first question um, was asking about a supernatural component to Jason Vukovic's action. He responds, Certainly, I feel as though I channeled an energy that was not my own and was assisted in some very specific ways, right places, right times type of scenario, by invisible forces. The spiritual component to my life path is something that remains consistent to this very day. When an avenging angel works through you, it's something of a rare privilege, though it may cost everything. Damn, this dude's smart. Okay, I just feel like I, I mean this in the best way. Jason Vukovic, you're probably not going to hear this, or you might, I don't know, maybe your sister will listen and tell you what I said, but every time I write you letters or talk about you or to you, I feel so dumb. (laughs) Because you are an intelligent person, and your girlfriend is hot as shit, by the way. Yes, ladies, he is no longer single. Ooh. Um, for Insta user Lolita, who had asked, um, what his time and place of birth and things like that, because she wanted to do his astrological chart. And personally, I'm really curious too. So Lolita, I hope you're listening because your question got answered. He responds, to the best of my knowledge, I was born at 3.33 a.m. That's another angel number, by the way. We kind of discussed that off. Yeah. I have had little contact with my mother in my lifetime, but if I remember correctly, that was it. So I would say 3.33 a.m. Anchorage, Alaska. The next one, he answered um, a person on Instagram named Tristan. He responds because he had asked um, how he was being treated in prison and, you know, were the guards bad, things like that. Uh, Jason responds, we've recently gained a new batch of guards and they treat me with complete indifference, which is actually a big improvement because the old batch of guards seem to have take any sort of notoriety as their opening to try to be critical and tear me down. In here, quote, hero is synonymous with target. I've always maintained a good standing with the inmates, although in person, it's more about what you did today than what you did a few years ago. Sure, the yard is violent. We get our fair share of stabbings, assaults, and stomp outs. Although in general, the Alaska population is much more peaceable than others. 
We put in a great deal of work to maintain stability in the yard. Yes, plenty of gangs. Most of them lo local localized. I am so sorry, guys. Again, that's all me. Not many nationwide car uh, something. I, I, I'm sorry. Up here in the pen, just local offshoots of common ideology. And the last one was a question from, wasn't even really a question, but from Instagram user die for freedom 6690, which I have been in contact with this guy. Um, I don't know his real name, but I just kind of want to make mention real quick that he is a very intelligent person as well. He and I both, we, we see different points of view of things, um, different personal relief or belief reliefs. Oh my God. I need relief. I need relief, <laughs> but different personal bel beliefs and, and some such, but it's one of those things where we agree to disagree and we move on. And, um, I have maintained a friendship with this person. He's a great guy. Um, but you know, die for, die for freedom. 66 90 has actually, um, basically just wanted me to let Jason Vukovic know to keep his head up. And, um, Jason responds, please let them and the Die for Freedom 6690 bunch know that I appreciate very much their words of support and that I am always needing new music. This is important, y'all. They should know that in here, music is freedom. Absolutely. Point being, they should feel free to go to Access Corrections Media, search for Spring Creek, type in my number, 264376 and purchase some music credits for me. I'm sure that all that is listed on my sister's link tree, which we've been posting every episode, but it's worth reminding folks. Life in the concrete shoebox can be much improved with a little music. And to that, I say I agree. Um, just the other day, after I received this letter, um, I've been in contact with Angelina, um, telling her about some, like, special plans that I haven't even discussed with Amanda yet, not because I'm leaving Amanda out, but because I had an idea that just randomly came to me in the car. But, um, I don't, I'll talk to you about that off air because I would like to keep this a surprise. But I was talking to Angelina and I was like, man, I really want to do something good for Jason. I had a dream about Jason Vukovic the other night and he was thanking us for what all we've done. And I woke up kind of in tears because I feel like I wasn't doing enough. So there was that idea that I'd had, and then I, I decided that I was going to go ahead and purchase him a book from, you know, the book list that they've got on the Barnes & Noble site, and also sent him about $15 worth of music credits. So if I could do that, anybody can do that. So I strongly encourage everybody, please help him out. Like, he's not, he's not asking for much. Nobody's asking for much. Just a little bit of support and love and encouragement goes a long way. And that's all. I've got, um, Shawnee, I have something special to say to you after this episode, but, um, yeah, Amanda, take over real quick. I'm taking over. You are taking over. Are you taking over the, the world? I am taking over the world. What am I taking? Well, I guess, um, you know, I scripted this and I was <laughs> going to agree with you. I, I'm not afraid to admit I did have to script this a little bit because I'm disorganized. It's but, better to do it this way, y'all. We yeah, don't really. script everything. No, we don't script everything, but, you know, because I have ADD and I have a problem with, like, you know, jumping Amanda's shit and interrupting her all the time, I was like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna do better. So I scripted it a little bit. But basically, Amanda and I, we were going to agree that we both love love. We love love, right? So Courtney and I, we love love. Yes, we, we love love. We, we love it. Yes. Even though the contest is over, y'all should still really leave us some reviews because they really so make our day. Yes, even even the bad shitty ones when people sympathize with serial killers or say that uh, my voice is ugly. Love that. Okay, so uh, what are we talking about tonight? You'll see. But this episode is called A Nefarious Nightmare. Oh, really? I thought that was the name of our podcast. Just kidding. Okay, okay. It's card. It's card? <laughs> is this a Joker's card? Is this an ICP episode? It's a Joker's card. Oh my goodness. Oh. It's called A Narcissist Nougat. So, can a nougat be narcissistic? I mean, I always thought it was more of like a confectionery item. It has no soul. Well, neither do narcissists, but this is the title of this episode, so... Oh, right. Okay. Join us in a narcissist's nougat. Tony Danza 
if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. I'll be there for you when the rain starts to pour some sugar on me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. A shout out to Shawnee from a pod called Empath for the Unsolved. Yes. He showed massive appreciation for Courtney's step-by-step Mentos mashup during the Craigery I'm a bite you price <laughs> episode that I busted my ass on. Yeah, and I wanted to give her more content to appreciate. So that one's for you, Shawnee. Shawnee, forgive me. I, I don't know how to say your last name. Is it Butte as in beautiful or is it butt as in butt? Can we just all agree that you are Shawnee beautiful butt? Mwah! You all have beautiful butts. We should do an appreciation episode called, like next year, you know, like after we finish this whole series of ABCs and shit. We should mm-hmm. like on the B, we should just be like a beautiful butt. That's beautiful. Thank you. So what are we talking about tonight? Death. More death. Yay! Someone posted the other day a meme that said, quote, When I die, I'm coming back as a cat and forcing you all to look at my butthole. And while that's gross, (laughs) I feel that. (laughs) I feel that. Make everybody look at my butthole. Well, death isn't a fun topic. Uh, It kind of is. Yeah. In an intriguing way. It's very intriguing. Because there's a few certain things in life. Death and the deep pockets of Jeff Bezos. But <clears throat> this podcast certainly isn't about Uncle Jeff unless, you know, we're discussing the penis-shaped ensemble that he flew into space a few <laughs> months ago on my dime. Seriously, Jeff, you can sponsor us. We'd love to be paid to talk about death and the penis ship. But no, we're discussing death. Death is apparently a mystery to all of us, even those of us who firmly believe nothing lies on the other side of death. Even people like me who are convinced that heaven lies on the other side and I'll meet my maker and await judgment. Even those who are 100% convinced that it's death and that's it. They very very likely wonder, what happens? What do we do when we meet the Grim Reaper? Where do we go? Truth is, nobody really knows. So we all resort deep down to what we believe and we clutch that like the last red balloon we find at a Pennywise factory. Can you imagine, Amanda? A factory of Pennywise clowns. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, I know it's not Freddy Krueger. Okay. Come on, though. But that's, that would terrify everybody. Like, imagine being encased in a glass box with 15 Pennywises. It's like a little bit of claustrophobia. That would, that would terrify everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that joke is quickly flying over by everybody's dome piece. But speaking <laughs> of factories and kid-friendly events such as clowns and clowning around... Amanda, gonna talk candy, and death, death by chocolate. And narcissist nougat. Oh, I get it. Yeah, right, Amanda. Quit talking. Quit talking so much. You're taking over this episode that you're supposed to be doing about Pennywise and Jeffrey Bezos. Get to it. I'm, ki- I'm kidding, by the way. What? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm awful. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, we are going to be talking about Dean. Oh, Deanie the, the Dean. Candy man. The Candyman. The Candyman. The Candyman. Can I keep that in there? The Candyman. Yes. And I'm doing this one because it's the month of Halloween. It's a Halloweeny. It's a Halloweeny episode. My next God, two There's a lot of weenies. There's a lot of pe- weenies and penis and stuff Weenie. in this episode already. God dang. I just. I'm a little raunchy, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> penis. Right. Okay. Let's jump in, honey. All right. All right. So, Dean, and I don't, how do you say his last name? Coral? We'll just, say, we'll just be texting and say Coral. Coral? I say Coral. Coral. I mean, that's just, that like, this isn't like my, I don't, I've known about this man for a long time, obviously, and I've always said his name Coral, but I don't know if I've ever seen it right. I think you're saying it right. I'm imagining that the way that it is pronounced is like how a Texan would pronounce Quarrel. 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 You want to you wanna start a quarrel? Quarrel. quarrel. <laughs> I like it. I don't like being quarrel. No, nobody does. 
He's a bitch. Well, Dino here was born in 1939 in Fort Wayne, Indiana. You do realize that this is the second case that we've done from Fort Wayne, Indiana, right? Oh, yeah. April Tinsley. Yeah, that's that's weird and sad. It is. That's insane. I didn't even catch that until you said it. And it's really weird because um, you did catch that because I put it in our notes. I'm kidding. I'm messing with you. Um, yeah. No, Sorry. it is it is sad because it, both of these cases like involve children. Yes. So insane. Well, uh, at least he didn't commit his crimes here. Right. So that's so that's a little bit of a difference, but it is really weird that they're both from there. Yep. So his uh his parents apparently didn't have the best marriage and they would argue a lot. But according to others, there wasn't really anything especially unusual about his home life. Mm -hmm. Uh, His father was known to be a strict disciplinarian, Mm -hmm. but we don't know for sure if it was ever abuse. I'm I'm assuming as such, you know, you can call me trash for that. I don't care. But back in the day, and I mean like back in the 50s and shit, quote, strip, strict, strip, whoa, strict disciplinarian? was a sugar-coated way of skating over the abuses and shit that happened behind closed doors. Like, you think, like, what is a, what is a real popular, and I don't, I'm not familiar with 50s stuff. What's a real popular, like, howdy-doody? So they, yeah. they come off as, like, a howdy-doody family, and then they close their doors and they're like, all right, who fucking took the last piece of cheese? I don't oh, know. Yeah. Cheese. And then I mean, they beat the fuck out of them. Yeah. I mean, go get a Switch. Yeah, so that's, that's their... That's their their way of saying strict disciplinarian. Yep. So, meanwhile, his mother was always spoiling and doting on Dean. Um, probably f- making up for his dad being an ass. A dick. An ass face. Okay. So, okay. thankfully, his parents divorced in 1946. Oh. And then they reconciled and oh. married a second time. Oh. But after their second divorce, Mm -hmm. (laughs) his mother started traveling a lot more and she eventually remarried to a traveling salesman and they settled down in Vidor, Texas. Is it Vidor? I can't pronounce anything tonight. Fedora? Fedora? It's not like, it's not an S. V-I-D-O-R. So this doesn't stay in Fort Wayne then? No. Okay. But it doesn't help that this comes to Texas either. Yeah, fucking people always trying to ruin Texas for folks. I know. What is with this? Ugh. So, in school, Dean was apparently Mm well-behaved. His uh, grades were decent, and he occasionally dated girls from the neighborhood or from school. All right. In the mid-1950s, his mom and stepfather started a candy company called pecan prince do you say pecan or pecan pecan okay, that's good. the right way to say it i agree yeah. oh, we're <laughs> gonna get so much people. so Come much hate me. mail so much hate mail it's pecan <laughs> it's pecan <laughs> so they uh they actually started that in their family's garage so uh did they ever change the name to um the fresh pecan prince of bel-air like, I can imagine a theme song, something like, chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool, and all shooting up, airheads and nerds up in the school with a couple of guys who were up to no good. Got the diabetes in the neighborhood. Courtney. Huh. No. Okay. But I did like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dean helped a lot with the candy company. Him and his younger brother operated the machines that produced the candy. Uh, by the time his mom divorced her second, third husband, <laughs> like, she's been married three times now, but the first two were the same person. So does Do that you remember count? remember Jerry Springer? Yeah. <laughs> Do you watch Steve Wilkos? <laughs> no, I actually should, though. He's bald, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Okay. He was, he was Jerry's muscle. I know. Um... So I don't know. Her second, third husband. It's her second husband, but third marriage. There we go. I think that Steve Wilkos. I'm sorry, this is going off a little bit. I think (laughs) Steve Wilkos should join Dog the Bounty Hunter 
And they should both get a tow truck. A tow truck. And... That's how they find Brian Laundry. They run over Brian Laundry with the oh soda. yeah, that'll work too. So did so, she start to revamp the candy business? Yeah, so she got the candy business, but they moved it to the Houston Heights area, and she named Dean the vice president, and his brother was the secretary slash treasurer. Got in one little fight, and my mom got scared and said, "You're opening a candy factory in Vador." I tried. I think it works. I think it works. Oh my god. I don't know. The Vidor just doesn't rhyme with anything. Fedor? Vidor. We're just gonna go with it. Alright. So anyways, Dean was drafted into the army in nineteen sixty four. And he served about ten months. Okay. He applied for a hardship discharge. After explaining that he needed to help his mother at her store. I think that was just the way to go home. But, whatever. Did I lose my spot? No. Okay, cool. (laughs) Where are you? I, okay. You're not here today, are you? No, I'm not. I love you. I love you too. (laughs) So... For several years, Dean worked at the candy company, which was renamed to Coral Candy Company. Hang on. Why does that sound familiar? I mean, I swear they made like a taffy or something. Something. Do you know if they still exist? No, they didn't. I, I actually did a goog. So. <laughs> <laughs> I did a goog. A goog. It took my brain a second to process what you just said. I did a goog. I was like, so, wait, what? I did a goog. (laughs) And there's, they don't still exist today? I I tried to find them and I couldn't really find too much. Coral Candy Company sounds very familiar. Like it's almost right up, it's almost right up there with like Brock's to me. Yeah. I want some candy. But uh, I just feel like. I have some candy. Yeah, well, you're all the way over there, and I'm all the way over here. I got pumpkin puree gummies. Nope, never mind. Never mind. I don't want any candy. <laughs> it's fall time, baby. I know. I know. I like the smell of pumpkin, but I don't really particularly like the taste. My husband walked in the other day and just said that it smells just like a huge pumpkin in our house. So, I would oh, yeah. love to it's hang out time. there. I would like to hang out there. You know what sounds really good right now, actually? Mm. First of all, I feel like that our listeners would probably think that we are stoned out of our gourds right now. I said gourd! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> but no, I I swear to God that like if you were to... I know, if you guys have never been to an H-E-B, go to one and get this. They have, like in their deli... No, not deli. What the hell am I thinking? The bakery? They have their their own particular cinnamon rolls. Ooh. Oh my God. Okay. I'm going to have to get some of those tomorrow. I was going to make French toast for my family tomorrow, but instead. You want to hear something? Really weird. Keep going. I'm showing you something. Show me something, but I instead am going to just have to skip the French toast. What is that? French toast casserole. Damn it. I make, I, I've already, it's an overnight soak. Like you start it. It, like the night before and it soaks overnight in the milk and egg oh my god mixture. and then I just get up like at 530 in the morning and throw it in cereal yes well I'm just gonna make cereal. some cereal tomorrow morning for everybody <laughs> cereal and pop tarts that's all we have pop oh I have pop tarts in here ooh do you yes I do cherry flavor they're oh. the HEV brand with the frosting right yep you're not a psycho no eat pop tarts with no frosting i don't get those people i'm sorry i would dip that in coffee that would be good but no like i have the i'm sorry a lot of people like the strawberry pop tarts or like the bougie like uh i like s'mores yeah those are those are good but i'm burnt out on those because i ate an entire box one night and i just couldn't do that so but but my favorite one is the cherry one for some reason i really like that one i have two favorites actually Mm -hmm. because Usually year-round, year I really don't buy Pop-Tarts that often, but if I'm buying them throughout the year, I buy the cherry 
with the frosting. Yeah. But like now I'm buying the pumpkin ones. <laughs> we went from Coral <laughs> Candy Company to it sounding familiar. Well, I mean, you can see how we got here. And to to people thinking we're stoned to to this, to like cinnamon (laughs) rolls. And this is definitely a Halloween episode, though, because like we're talking about fall foods. Also, guys, hit up hit up Vile Beans Coffee. I'm telling you. Yes. Fairies 15. You'll hear that promo. Okay. All right. right. Let's let's get back into it. Anyways, enough backstory. <laughs> that wasn't even a backstory. We were talking about, like, food. Oh, but, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but getting back to Dean. Right. Enough of his backstory. <laughs> Dino. So let's start talking about this creep and his creepy, evil ways. Okay. All right. The weirdness um, apparently started with a teenage boy who worked at the candy company. Mm-hmm. And he complained to Dean's mother that Dean had made sexual advances towards him. Wow. But rather than asking him about it, she just fired the boy. Oh, God. Another fucking sympathizer. Oh, yay. Yeah. Yay. Don't get me started on that. I'll address it another time. But basically, there was a post I saw that I disagree with saying that we shouldn't call serial killers and abusive people and pedophiles monsters. Sorry, but they are. So, if uh, someone had accused my son of that, or even my daughter, you know, I'd at least look into it. Because yeah. I wouldn't want somebody to not look into it had it been mine, you know? Yeah. How she handled that was one of the millions of reasons that victims are afraid to speak up today. Absolutely. And uh, it's, apparently it wasn't even just that one boy either. Oh my god. But that that's all that was confirmed. But I saw other things if that's was not the right one but all right right here we will be taking a break oh darn there are nearly 2,000 original feature films and documentaries in the netflix catalog and that number is only growing so i've made it my mission to watch them all nope that's a lie but i'm gonna watch as many as i possibly can In each episode, I'll be joined by a delightful guest, full disclosure, usually my brother Ryan, where we'll rate, review, and discuss the movie or documentary in two parts, spoiler-free in the first half and spoiler city in the second half. And as much as we'd love to watch and chill with you, unfortunately, we're watching Netflix without you. Listen to Watching Netflix Without You on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. How many cups of coffee have you had today? A lot. Can you give me that in numbers? A lot, teen, a lotty, 30 a lot. I'm sure you pee bro at this point. I'm getting a little concerned. It's it's more of a like a beige-ish, like taupe yellow. It's the clarity. It's have uh you, have you heard of vile beans? Oh my god, yes, and I hound dog them like nobody's business. You would so love their coffee. They have brand names after fictional characters like Jason Voorhees and also animated villains and serial killers. You mean to tell me that we roast serial killers, and technically, so do they. Like, do they roast their own serial killers? I mean, I mean, beans? Do they roast their own beans? <laughs> Yes, it's like a match made in hell for true crime community. I'm eyeing the monster coffee. That one's an original roast, and that one's like right up my alley, you know, with the half and half, all that. I'm looking at the Cinnabundi. <laughs> Cinnabundi. That one seems to be a nice Cinnabon flavor without the sugar. I wonder if Ted Bundy smelled like that when they executed him by electrocution. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that dude smelled pretty bad when he died. Eh, enough about that. We have a promo code. If our listeners go to vilebeans.com and use the promo code nefarious15, they get 15% off every purchase. Dude, that's dope. I'm gonna go run, not walk, and, and order some of that coffee, but I'm also gonna give my cheesy sign off now for this ad. Go for it. <clears throat> Buy all means vile beans all right we are back hey at this point we just deduced that courtney thinks sympathizers to her favorite word shitbags are just that yep that's what they are 
Meanwhile, Dino was in the back installing a pool table to ask these boys to come and play with him. I, I, I gotta interject something real quick. I know this is totally off the, the script. But Dino, every time I hear Dino, I think of, like, Dino from some cartoon. From what cartoon? I don't know. From a cartoon. I I also think of um, Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe it's Dino from, like, the Flintstones. Yeah, it's Dino. I think that's what you're talking I think that's what you're thinking. Probably. But So, uh, David, a uh, little boy, 12 years old. Mm-hmm. His name was David Brooks. Mm-hmm. Everybody learned that name. David. You're going to be hearing a lot. So he was introduced to Dean and offered him candy and a place to hang out. Mm-mm. Yeah. So over a period of two years, Dean groomed David and built up his trust. By that time, David was 14 Dean was regularly sexually abusing him and bribing him with gifts and money to stay quiet. Typical textbook grooming behavior. Red fucking flags everywhere. Oh. Yeah. I mean, he's got a candy shop. Mm hmm. Really? <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway. Okay. Anyways, by uh, September of 1970. Dean's mother had divorced her third husband, <clears throat> or second husband, third marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm never going to get that right. I know. It's like, like I said, it's a Jerry Springer <laughs> moment. <laughs> so she ended up moving to Colorado. Okay. Leaving the candy company to her ex-husband. So <laughs> Dean was out. Okay. Little creepy pool table, hide a space. That was gone. But he did stay in Houston since he was now an electrician for the Houston Lighting and Power Company. Tell me that he electrocuted himself. Huh. No. Damn. But, by the way, he didn't work there until the day he died. Okay, that's crazy. Maybe he electrocuted himself. (laughs) (laughs) No, I wish. But, eh, I don't know. His death was pretty good, too. So, we'll get there. All right. And uh, he had his own apartment. He was about in his early 30s at this time. Okay. Um, He did move very, very often, though. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes just staying in one spot for a few weeks. See, that's that's more typical behavior. Now, uh, all these things singled out, they don't necessarily make a person a shitbag, you know? Yeah. Um, It doesn't make them a pedophile or a rapist, but... You put them all together and it's looking a little bit fishy, like a ginormous red flag. So when I was like doing this, I was like, how was this man not caught earlier? Like, how did did this just keep going by? This is, I mean, like, this is really like hurtful because I don't know how this went on for so long. Right, and that is and, that is really hard to understand. But going back to the place that I used to work, that I you know used to work with, blah blah blah, like took care of children, and blah blah. blah. Um, but yeah, one of the, I mean, it from what I understand, like back then, they didn't really just think that this this was a thing. So they they were a little bit less privy to the things that like like occur. They, they didn't think, oh, a white van looks suspicious. They didn't think, oh, a man giving my child candy is suspicious. They didn't think any of that was suspicious. They just, they knew rape and pedophilia existed, but they thought it was rare. There's people even that live today that think that it was a lot more rare back then. When the truth is, no, it wasn't. It was just very well hidden because yeah. people got away with it. So it's, it's not anybody necessarily like their fault that um they didn't know about this so much it's just people back then were afraid to speak up because you know like children for example speak don't speak unless you're spoken to things like that things have changed nowadays where it's a lot more uh suspect you know and people notice that kind of shit but um yeah it's it's hard to fathom how people got away with this kind of stuff and how it just kind of ran under our noses but at the same time, I understand because 
you know, they just didn't have the know-how that they have now. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's, it's so, infuriating. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. But his first victim that we know of mm -hmm. was Jeffrey Conan. He was 18 years old. Okay. He was a student who was hitchhiking from Austin to Houston. He was actually going to visit his girlfriend. Oh, wow. Um, sadly, Dean was the one who picked him up. So he did. I kind of like looked at this. Mm -hmm. He did pass away at nearly 19 in Houston. He had suffered a death via strangulation. And the fuck ass who killed him buried him at High Island Beach to be discovered three years later, August 10th of 1973. And that's just sad because, you know, you look at those pictures of Jeffrey Conan, you could so tell that he was one of those, like, shy but goofy types. You know, like, like he really loved his life, but he wasn't going to go out of his way to, you know. It's, yeah. a, it's very sad. No, I went through and looked at every single one of these boys. Mm-hmm. Just... It was really hard to do, but I like to acknowledge the victims. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones who are important. So I did send you a link that has just a, that you can put in there and it will just take you to a list of all the victims that we know of oh. um, with like a picture of them. So go take all, a look at that. All of this shit will be on the Instagram too. Yeah. So... Well, you guys who listening, just go take a look. Go, I mean, if you want. I'm not going to make you go look at these people, but. Right. That's how I sympathize. We got to remember the victims as well, as much as we humanly, as, as humanly possible, because. Exactly. So many of them just go forgotten, and it's rough, so. And I don't want these babies to be forgotten, ever. Right. So. Anyways, a few months later in December, uh, Dean kidnapped two more teenage boys and tied them up to his bed where he sexually assaulted them. Mm. During this horrendous act, David Brooks walked in on him. The guy that we're supposed to remember. Yes. Okay. So after being confronted, Dean told David that he was in a gay pornography ring. And then he told him that he sent the boys to California when he had really killed them both. What a fuck ass. Yep. So, also, this piece of shit bought David silence with a Corvette. Mm -mm. And then he told David that he would give him $200 for each boy he brought to him. And David agreed. That's... Wow. <laughs> Wow, just wow, I know. Uh, wow, more more fucking grooming. <clears throat> more grooming. Yes. And also remember that. Mm -hmm. um, one day, David had brought him a boy named Elmer Wayne Henley. Everybody remember Elmer? Mm hmm All right, so Dean apparently liked him because he spared his life and groomed him just like he had David. Mm-hmm. So, then Elmer would bring him boys as well. Okay. I need to mention now that Elmer said later on, Dean told me he would pay me $200 for every boy I could bring in, and maybe more if they were really good-looking boys. That's but, sick. Oh, beyond sick. And then, but um, Elmer had said, in reality, Dean usually only paid them 5 to $10 per boy. Okay, so that's that's another slightly lesser known fact. Uh, um, you know, I'm a I'm a victim of some shit myself. You know, mm -hmm. we're never gonna get into it on on the podcast. Yeah. Um, Amanda is well aware. Um, but what I've learned that was that when money becomes involved, uh, honestly, just in any situation, if it sounds too good to be true, it fucking is. I didn't sell kids. I never would have, and I never will. I mean, that's a huge fuck no. 
Um, my situation was actually very different, but you know, we'll say that I was promised all of my profits and got not one fucking penny. And I worked really hard to, to get nothing. And I'm still so salty, and I think it's justified. Um, but that's a, that's the thing. Like typically, you know, somebody who's a, and who's a groomer who offers money and and things like this, they're they're gonna promise you the world just to get you to do what exactly what they want, and they're not gonna give you shit for it. Yep. So. Yep. Exactly. It's it's incredible. Some mm-hmm. people just me. I'm not mm-hmm. an. So, Elmer said he initially refused Dean's offer, but his family re- really needed the money, and they got it, so he did it. I mean, I know this is going to sound bad. I don't completely blame him. He was a victim. Yep. I'm sure that Stockholm probably took hold, you know, desperation, etc. Yep. So Don't feel bad for Elmer, though, completely. Okay. Some witnesses said that Elmer seemed flattered to be included in Dean's scheme. Yeah, I think I've learned through this podcast that, you know, we're not going to glorify shitbags, but a tiny bit of sympathy is is very natural depending on the opening circumstances. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I was was going kind of between my feelings about them. I'm kind of the same. I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. So... Anyways, David and Elmer together for a few years in the early 70s would drive around in Dean's Plymouth GTX or his nice white van, Mm -hmm. convincing young boys aged anywhere from 30, 30, 30, 30. Wow. Uh, Young, young boys from the age of 30. (laughs) That's all right. It's been a long day. 13, 13 is that number. Which, I wish it was 30, not 13. I wish it was no age. I wish it was, <laughs> that sounded bad. That's not how I meant it at all. No, you're good. You're good. But, so, any it boys ranged anywhere from 13 to 20. Right. They would lure these boys into the car van mm-hmm. with candy, alcohol, or drugs. Okay, Ew. And, and the white van part, yes. that's just gross and also typical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, after they brought the boys to Dean, they would help him bound and gag the victims. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, earmuffs if anybody needs them. Yeah. I mean, we'll put a trigger warning in the beginning of this episode, but even still, here's where the trigger starts. Yeah. So, earmuffs. Yep. All right. Um... So, all three of these assholes would rape them. Afterwards, they would strangle or shoot them. Wow. Every boy that we know was murdered. Nobody was spared. Wow. Um, To top it off, Dean would make each victim write their family a postcard, letting them know they had run off, but they were okay. This this is heartbreaking and very infuriating. And I've heard similar cases where the, they will make... It's kind of like Shelly Notek, for example. As well as other cases that we will eventually cover. You know, Shelly Notek would, like, forge letters. Uh, it's just... I fucking hate people. Fucking oh, yeah. hate them. Oh, so... And one of these victims... Um, Mark Scott, mm-hmm. he was 17 when he disappeared, and that was on April 20th, 1972. He was reported missing very soon by his fr- frantic parents. I'm really glad. I'm sorry. I'm really glad that they reported him very soon. They did. Yeah. I mean, that's great. And a few days later, Mark's parents received a postcard from Mark. Mm-hmm. I'm doing doing fingers it's not mark mark he's quote <laughs> quote thank you mm-hmm. saying that he had found a job in austin that paid three dollars an hour and all was well uh so these parents knew that was crap but the police didn't do anything about it since they thought he was still a runaway okay so a couple things 
three dollars an hour was like I think it was slightly above minimum wage back then. Yeah. yeah. So to those of you listening, like three dollars an hour, that's not a lot. That was a lot back then. No, yeah. okay, maybe it wasn't a lot. It was a livable wage back then. Yeah. But it, it really was, does. It does kind of. It kind of says a lot that um, you know, we haven't gone over seven fifty an hour since what year? Oh, it was years ago. We went years ago. I remember when it was five something an hour. That's how old I am. <laughs> but that's one thing. But two, dear police officers, it's not always a runaway. Look into all of it. Better to be a waste of time than a murder victim. The fuck? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, baby. <laughs> and these poor boys, I mean. Yeah, for real. God. So, uh, and another father um, by the name of Everett Wal- Waldrop. Mm-hmm. Um, he was the father of two victims. He camped out at the police station for eight months. Oh, man. After being told every day that his sons were runaways, not missing. Wow. But in reality, both of his sons were killed by Dean. His uh, son, Donald, who was 15 years old, and 13-year-old Jerry. God, that's so fucking heartbreaking. Yeah. They're all babies. I mean, teens, but they're all babies, you know? No, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm thirty. I'm I'm thirty something, and I'm still my mama's baby. Right. I'm. I am all of like twenty two, <laughs> and I'm still my mom's babe. So yeah. I mean, that doesn't change. I'm every 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 person has somebody. Yeah. And it's not fair. Right. But keep moving on, Amanda. All right. So about after three years and 28 murders. God damn. Yeah. About. We all think there's a lot more. Jeez. Dean turned on Elmer on August 8th, 1973. Mm. After Dean. Elmer brought him two teens. Hold on. Dean turned on Elmer. Dean turned on Elmer. Dean turned on Elmer. Okay. Yeah. Listen to this shit. Yeah. So... Elmer brought home these two teens, Tim Curley and Rhonda Williams. Okay. What sounds weird about that? Um, one of them's a female. Ding, ding, ding. This was odd because they had never targeted a girl before. Mm-hmm. Later, Elmer insisted that he had brought them there to party, not as victims. Wow. So they drank, they huffed paint before passing out. Okay. When Elmer woke up, he was tied up right beside Rhonda and Tim while Dean screamed at Elmer saying, I'm going to kill you, but first I'll have my fun. Oh, God. Quote. There's my quote of the day. Oh, man. Uh, We're going to have to find a different one. Nope. I got a few more. Okay, cool. Maybe. So, Dean carried... Elmer into the kitchen to let him know just how mad he was that he brought Rhonda to his home. Elmer pleaded with him and told him he'd help kill Rhonda and Tim. So Dean eventually untied Elmer and then they brought Rhonda and Tim into the bedroom and tied them up on Dean's torture bed. He had like this uh, plywood bed thing with like, you know, like the handcuffs and the, like to tie him up. That's awful. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's. I mean, the way I if, heard the way I read it described was. If that's like a kink thing, if it were something with BDSM or something like that, that's different. This is this is straight up like, this is rape is what we're talking about. Yeah. So this is insane. So while doing this, Elmer picked up Dean's cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we're keeping that we're keeping that <laughs> wow by the way I said cun no <laughs> it sounded like you sounded said sounded like because I know what it sounded like but I swear I said cun instead of gun oh my goodness 
that we... <laughs> wow. <laughs> I heard it, though. I heard it. I heard it. Picked just up like, his, yeah. He just picked up his cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate that word. Like, I hate that word. <laughs> I, you know what? I used to... I used to hate the word cunt, but I've grown to appreciate it so much as I've gotten older because sometimes it really describes somebody and Dean is a fucking cunt. Apparently. He's Apparently cunt. my might think so. He is a bloody tampon been stuck in there for 15 days too long. Cunt. Gross. Listen, I'm here to roast serial killers. Oh. And that is what he is. He is a bloody tampon, been stuck in there for 15 days too long, cunt. And oh not God. not enough deodorant in the world. Okay. I'm crying. I have tears. Thank okay. you for making my day by saying the word cunt. I said cunt. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Anyways, uh, let me try to redo that. Okay. <laughs> While doing this, Elmer picked up Dean's gun <laughs> that he had set down and shot Dean six times, killing him. Bye, Dean. So but you know, I'm I'm not I'm still not an Elmer fan, but you know, way to go, Elmer, for that. Yeah. He got. Dean Nide. Really? Courtney? Dad jokes? Dean Nide. <laughs> like, like, a, like a cunt. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm never going to live it down, am I? Hey, it's okay. You know what? I have to remember the fucking turkey baster. You're so, welcome. You're, you're, you're welcome, too. I implanted that cunt in your head. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm gonna oh Okay. Okay. Dean right. Nide. Uh Rhonda, who actually survived this whole ordeal, spoke publicly about it and said that Dean's behavior had shaken something in Elmer's mind. Rhonda said that, quote, he stood at my feet and just all of a sudden told Dean this couldn't keep going or he couldn't let him keep killing his friends and that it just had to stop. Good. Dean looked up and he was surprised. So he started getting up and he was like, you're not going to do anything to me. Fucking A. This guy pretty much wrote the book, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, now he's got a power trip on top of all the other red flags. You know, a lot of pedophiles have a God complex and a power trip. And that's what that last sentence says to me. Also, by the way, Rhonda's a fucking badass, so. Yes, she is. So. Is yeah. Rhonda still alive, do you know? Yeah, because I think this, she didn't come out and say anything until like 2018. Okay, well, well, Rhonda, we're reaching out to you, girl. You are fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot of guts to come out and talk about. Yeah. I can't even imagine what she saw and had to go through, so. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Um, anyways, right after Elmer shot Dean, mm -hmm. he called the police and confessed everything. Good. As he should. At least he did that. Yep. And uh, surprisingly, Elmer and David both made official confessions, stating their involvement in the crimes and offered to show police where the victims were buried. Okay, so that's that's good we all have our mixed feelings about this whole thing but that's good because a lot of unfortunately a lot of like killers and things like that even those who have been under a spell of sorts mm -hmm. will refuse to give any kind of closure and at least they're doing that you know oh definitely so definitely. and uh but david denied actively participating in the actual murders I mean, I'm telling you, I'm not excusing their behavior at all, but, you know, they, they were victims. But, you know, Stockholm and what a shitty situation to be forced into. Absolutely. I mean, maybe he was afraid, you know, to continue with, like, maybe he was kind of dead set on denying because, I don't know. 
I'm not a doctor. Well, yeah. I don't think. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to make these are good people. No, I mean, I don't either. But that was made. You know, that it was, was. I mean, we know. think. True, true. We don't know too much about we their back, we back never, history. So. And we're never sure. Very true. Um, after a week, they recovered 17 bodies from shallow graves and a boathouse shed. Wow. Soon after that, they found another 10 bodies on High Island Beach mm-hmm. and some woods near Lake Sam Rayburn. Wow. They found one more victim in 1983. Oh my god, wow. Yeah, that one was insane to me. And sadly, we'll never know how many boys Dean actually killed that David and Elmer didn't know about. I'm pretty positive there was more victims. What do you think? I mean, I would be saddened, but I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, there's so many unidentified bodies that are recovered. And it it could have been anyone. You know, that's what's scary because... I believe that people, there are people that do literally get away with t- with a ton of shit. Like, look at the Zodiac Killer, for example. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, uh, I know they still have, I think there's still one mm-hmm. boy that was never, um, identified. Wow. Or, um, like, reported. That's awful. That's really sad. I feel horrible about that. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> so <clears throat> Elmer was convicted of six murders and sentenced to six life terms. Bye. Bye bye. And David, David was convicted of one murder and received one life sentence. Wow. One. Wow. I, that that pissed me off. I mean, I know it's still a life sentence in whatever, but he 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 lured Elmer in. I mean, he was around so much more. That was not his first murder. He didn't right. just do one murder. And that just I'm just I mean, I'm just kind of conflicted about all of this, but I mean, I agree that they both should have harsher penalty penalties. Oh my god, I can't talk tonight. Um, but also I'm like, you know, they were forced into this and at the same time though, would they be willing to walk properly with society after all that? Probably not. I mean, they haven't received near enough therapy or what have you. They likely would do this again as a result. Sadly. Yeah. So. Really sadly. So. <sighs> I usually don't like to let everyone know how our murderers are doing in jail. Mm-hmm. But since I feel like Elmer and David were both victims as well as criminals... I did look into it, and Elmer is promoting his art from prison Mm. and getting a lot of hate mail. (laughs) Okay, I just had this, like, vision of, like, you're watching a TV show, and it's, like, going over, like, the story of somebody's life, and it tells you how they're doing afterwards, and it's like, we don't really know much about Elmer, but he was promoting his art from prison, and he was getting a lot of hate mail, apparently. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, and he was also featured in the second season of the Netflix show Mindhunter. He was also featured in the second season of that Netflix show. I think it's called Mindhunter. I don't know. I don't watch them newfangled Netflix. But, and, uh, oh, he was portrayed by actor Robert Arameo. He was from uh, Game of Thrones. And then he was portrayed by that Game of Thrones guy. Let me come through that screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, um, oh, as for David, uh huh, he refused all interviews and died in 2020 from COVID. Again, <laughs> I'm conflicted. Like, half of me is all good fucking riddance, and the other half is like, at least it was COVID and not an execution. Well, yes. <laughs> But then again, COVID's pretty bad, so. <laughs> it's just like, really, after all all that? After all that, all he had to do was go get coughed on. Yep. But, yeah, that's all. Well, that's all, folks. Oh, 
We will post a link to a page that has all the victims listed. I will make sure to put their pictures up on Instagram, Ma. And I mean, I gotta say something real quick. First of all, Amanda, great job. Fantastic oh. fucking job. Thanks. This is your best one. You said they're all fine. No, no. I mean, they're, they're all pretty damn good. But this one was was awesome. I mean, sad. Very sad. I know. But, but you you really killed it this time. Oh, God. I should not say you killed it. Oh, my God. No. Wrong words. Bad, Courtney. <laughs> you murdered it. No, that's no, that's not a good no. one. You, execu- good one. you execute it. No. <laughs> you roast. No, not roasted. <laughs> You did the thing, okay? You did the Be thing. Great. You did Thank the you. damn thing, okay? Everybody, round of applause for Amanda. Um, I want to. I want to do something real quick. Um, oh man, okay. I realize that I didn't put any show notes up for the Craig Price episode on Instagram or Facebook, and I actually wanted to take the time to apologize for that. Not only to just all of you, but to Amanda also. Um. I will post those all back to back, but please understand, you know, Amanda and I both, we've had a ton of personal things occur in our life away from podcasting that's hindered my own ability to be on track. I don't want to get too deep, too deep into it, but you know, get to know me just a little bit. Basically after months of waiting, my family and I were finally approved for a government program to help us with rent, which was a much needed answered prayer. Um, this actually, I found out about this like literally at 10 o'clock this morning mm-hmm. and it's 10, 10, 23 in the evening. And I'm still like kind of in shock about it because, you know, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for an answer for months now. And, you know, we're finally approved. So, um, and I, I want everybody to know it's it wasn't necess- we weren't being stupid with our money. It's just that you know I kind of unfortunately lost a job last year for no good reason, except that maybe they got upset that I put Black Lives Matter on my Facebook. So mm. that's the only reason why I, could, why I can think about that. So in the middle of a bunch of other shit that was happening at that time, you know, my mom had lost her husband. She's going through things for her own health and we also had to pick up and move everybody into one house and then they let me go (laughs) you know I mean it was just like I couldn't I couldn't catch a break so I'm not saying that all of this is an excuse I just want everybody to know that you know we've got a lot of shit going on right now um but yeah um also you know I've been off of my medication for like a week now because my doctor failed to tell me I needed to set a new PCP appointment and so my mental health has been kind of on a major struggle bus. Um, it's not going to be a permanent thing, but you know, it's pretty dangerous to stop an antidepressant. And they straight up told me this when they switched me from one to another. So right now I'm experiencing some weird side effects and trying to use St. John's wort until I can get my medication back. So as many of you already know, also Amanda has been dealing with major plumbing issues at her home and they finally did get resolved. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> we both have a ton of other things going on, guys. Um, this podcast is our escape from all of that. So I do thank you all for understanding the minor things that I have forgotten to post. And I apologize if any of that has affected anybody in any way. That's my thing. All right. So do we have anything to close out with? Um, where's your ending quote? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So Amanda's now looking for a new <laughs> ending quote. I'm watching her pick up her phone and search for it. I can assure you. Oh, oh, there was a movie named The Candyman. There is nothing to fear. Right? will be written on a thousand. Wow, that Wait. was really kind of creepy. Um. Oh. Don't no, stop believing. No, I'm gonna have a good one. <sighs> Ready? Yes. The quote for this episode. <laughs> Is who wants to live forever? Wow, who um, who said that? Was that Mother Teresa? No, oh. Freddie Mercury. Okay, Jesus, I did this last time too. <laughs> did I guess Gandhi? And you were like, no, that was the Doors. Jim Morrison. Yeah, Jim same- Morrison was last week. 
Jim Morrison was races. the Doors. Okay, I'm just gonna go through like all of my favorite musicians. Okay, cool. That works. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. Follow us on all the things. We have an Instagram, a Facebook, a TikTok. I've been super active on Twitter lately. We also are now on YouTube. Yep. Come find us on all the things. Mm-hmm. Rate and review us. Share us with your friends. Mm-hmm. We're working really hard to build our audience and just sharing us is a huge help. Courtney and I want to get to a point like Crime Junkie did and be able to donate back to the victims and their families. So please help us out. We will totally be grateful for that. Yes, I echo all of that. Um, All right. And one more thing. What's that? Don't be a penis face. And wear talcum powder. Avoid chafing. (laughs) Don't be a turd burglar. And eat a hamburger. (laughs) LOL. (laughs) Don't be a dick and wear deodorant. We changed it up on them. Look at us. Do you like that? We should do that more often. I do. Don't be a dick. Damn. <laughs> I couldn't get Amanda to do it. Okay. I did it. Oh, you did. okay. Don't be a dick. And wear deodorant. I still did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to A Nefarious Nightmare. Music used in this podcast was created by Ghost Stories Incorporated. You can find their music on bandcamp.com. We do have social media. You can follow us at our Facebook page, at A Nefarious Nightmare, or you can follow our Instagram, Nefarious Nightmare Pod. If you have any stories of paranormal instances that have happened to you, or ideas for true crime, please email us at a nefarious nightmare at gmail.com. Thank you very much and take care.